Welcome back to Yoga Express, the virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. Yoga Express is filmed in the studios of Manhattan Neighborhood Network. We are a half hour yoga fitness program that airs Monday through Friday at 1.30 in the afternoon Eastern Time on Time Warner 57, RCN 84, and Fios 35. For viewers at home who have been with us in previous episodes, you will notice that we have a lot of help for you. Besides this program, we have a website, yogaexpress.com, Y-O-G-A-X-P-R-E-S-S.com. And we also have a blog, yogaexpress.blogspot.com, that helps you give a sense of the nature of our discussions on air in the studio. If you come and stretch with us right here in the studio, we will also give you a fridge magnet, which has a very simple sequence of 48 basic stretches called 48 plus. We also offer you a postcard with the same sequence on it, the 48 plus sequence on it. And I'm gonna hold that up. Hopefully one of the cameras will pick it up. And besides that, we have a book called Yoga Secrets where the whole concept, 48 plus preventive healthcare concept is actually displayed very clearly. It has 10 ailment specific cards in it to help you go from ailment to ailment. So each ailment, each of these common ailments would target, uh, to be able to prevent each one of these common ailments, you will be targeting a certain region of the body. For example, today we're gonna to take you through back bends to help you alleviate back pain, not just find relief for your back, but also to help prevent back pain or lumbago. Before I do that, the big moment you've been waiting for, we have Talisa Michela. And now I think I'm perfect, right? No? <laughs> well, Talisa Michela. Talisa Michela. I promised you I would try at least. Okay. Yes, but you're getting close. I was so <laughs> Am I one of the uh, few, am I in the minority when I'm not able to say your name or do most people have a problem? Um, Make me feel good. 99% of people have a problem pronouncing my name. It is unique, but it's also <laughs> beautiful. It does roll off the tongue. Thank you so much. Talisa, tell us how you felt after yesterday's episode, after the sun sanitation. I felt very revived. I felt um, excited um, for doing more, actually. And I know you're the kind of person who gets totally hyped on yoga. I, I am. Even when you go, I remember the last time you told me when you came in yesterday that the last time you finished taping over here with us, you went back and practiced some more yoga. Yes, I did. I was, um, I needed more. I was, um, not that I needed more, but it was, I enjoy it completely. It's a right. full commitment of being a part it's of it. It's a total it. workout it's and you so feel great. Fun. Yeah. And it's wonderful that you should express that. It's, it's beautifully put, actually. Fun is the word for it. As long as you enjoy it, it becomes, a, you know, habits are so hard to form. When you enjoy something, it's easy to make it a habit. And if you can make some, a good habit part of your daily routine, there's nothing like it. You, that's wonderful. You hit the nail on the head, and I'm so <laughs> glad you're back. I think you, you easily so qualify. Yeah, it's lovely having you here. Kiwan Kato, Kato. Yes. You brought out, I know you are an upcoming writer as well. We talked about it yesterday very briefly. One of these days, I hope you will be here in our studios to hold up your book and show it. <laughs> Another, what, four months, three months? Yes. Four three months. months. Watch out for Cato's book. Tell us the title again. A Valued Family. A Valued Family. Google him around about end of April. It should be out in the stores. Right now, yesterday, after we finished our episode yesterday, we talked about the push-up in sun salutation. Yes. You pointed out a very vital difference between the kind of 
what quote unquote push up that we did in yoga and the kind that you've been trained to do at the gym. Would you tell our viewers a little more about that? Sure. Well, in yoga, we tend to do what we call a military push up. <laughs> right. So our hands are always close, elbows close. Yes, to the body. Pull up <laughs> to right. the body. Um, but the other form of push ups, we kind of flare out our arms a bit. Right. So you kind of have like a wide pull up Opens and a more of a narrow, chest. just kind of like opening up the chest. Right, right. So and naturally, I tend to fly into the man who wants to have a wider chest move. Right. <laughs> so the <laughs> yoga, so it's good. It's a good balance. You can do the gym push-ups and you can do the yoga push-ups yeah. as well. So tell me, so there was something else you pointed out. You talked about the muscle groups that you were using when you had your elbows out. Yeah, well, yesterday we talked about how it was a bit more challenging kind of going with, going, bending your elbows. Right. Um, and I was sharing with you that when we talk about the plank in the gym, it's for the men in the gym. We focus, right. <laughs> with, we focus on doing the plank to strengthen our ab muscles. Ah, um, so you're using your abdominal yes, muscles more yes. with your elbows out. Um, with your, I mean, either way, I guess, because both ways, I, 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 I'm pulling in kind right, of right. my core. That's good. I'm really glad that we brought this up today because we in yoga, when we bring our elbows close together, mm -hmm. And we may not always, I may not have always called it out, but what we do typically is t strengthen or tighten the low back muscles. Mm -hmm. But to your point, when we tighten the low back muscles, we have to pull ourselves in. So you're talking about sucking it in? Yes. Well, okay, that's good. I'm glad you pointed out the difference. It's wonderful for viewers at home also to know that when you do do push-ups or any posture, even in the whole sense salutation itself, different mm -hmm. schools may have different styles, but it's good. I'm glad you pointed that out. So you're more of a gym person, or now you're going to get converted into yoga, or you're doing well, both? Well, I've found that yoga is very addictive. So ah, <laughs> talk about so addiction. I'm silently becoming a yogi. Yoga addict. Okay. I've been exposed now, though. Another yoga addict, and it's a healthful addiction. So you know, getting an addiction without putting anything into your body, why not? That's right, it's wonderful. Today we're gonna to take you through the lumbago sequence, which involves a lot of back bends. So just remember one thing, lumbago is low back pain, very simply put, it's low back pain. There are a couple of uh, simple rules of thumb. If you want to move something, for instance, if you want to avoid, prevent lumbago, you want to avoid any back pain, if you want to lift something, what you cannot Shift with one foot. Do not try to lift with two hands. That's one general rule of thumb that you always want to follow. Especially when you're very young, you feel strong and you feel, oh, I'm, I'm okay, and you start lifting something. When you go down, you go down with a straight back, you bend, you sit down on your haunches, then try to lift. So be very careful. But should you have the misfortune to actually have low back pain, or maybe it's chronic, someone in your family has it, doing forward folds, and the yoga forward folds that we have will help you ease the pain. It'll help you stretch the spine so that your spine has room to breathe and your vertebral column stretches a lot more. Today we're gonna to take you through preventive back bends. So let's, we're all going to stand up right now. We're gonna do back bends to help strengthen the spine. So here's what I'm gonna stagger. We're gonna stagger ourselves. Let me get my cheat sheet, put the lumbago sequence on top. Okay. All right, we're gonna start from the 48 plus postcard. We're gonna do, we've selected about 20 postures. I'm not sure how far we'll get, get to. Maybe we'll do all 20, maybe we won't, but we're gonna flow right through if possible. Heels are together, toes are slightly apart. Bring your palms in front of your chest. Inhale, take your arms all the way overhead. Now, once your arms are all the way over, tighten your, uh, your uh, low back muscles, tighten your buttock muscles, and expand your chest. So bring your arms behind your ears, tilt your pelvis forward just a little bit, and hold. This time we're not gonna fold over, we're gonna exhale, bring our arms in front of us up to shoulder height. We're gonna uh, bring our arms to shoulder height, and as we keep exhaling, we're gonna bend at the knees. Exhale. Bring your arms up to shoulder height. Keep exhaling, bend at the knees. And in this one, to Cato's point, engage your lower abdominal muscles as well as, as your low back muscles. Keep yourself nice and compact. Look at a point ahead that doesn't move, even though this is not necessarily a balanced posture, you want to stay focused. Let's inhale, come up. Exhale, 
bring your arms down all the way. Now, you might have noticed the posture we just came out of is called Thunderbolt or Utkatasan. Utkatasan may involve a little bit of a forward bend. So when we lean forward a little bit, you may feel a bit of pressure on the knees. If you feel there's a bit of pressure on your knees, especially as you age, as, I, as I'm in that category, especially as we age, we don't want too much pressure on the knees. So you may want to lean back just a little bit. Let's turn a little bit to one side. Let's all turn a little bit to the left. This time, bring your feet out about six to eight inches apart. Now, if you're feeling very tired today, you may want to bring your feet further apart. Now, if you want to challenge yourself, you, you can keep your feet all the, all the way close, or really close. We're going to be somewhere at mid, I'm going to be somewhere at midpoint. Kato's feeling very strong. He's got his feet very close together. Notice Kato has socks on, but he has rubber dots under the socks. So just be mindful, be careful and watch out for the screen jersey end. It's okay, I'm just kidding. Okay, bring, put, your, put your brakes on, bring your toes in, place your palms on your buttocks. Now, palms are nice and flat. Now this time, open up your chest, bring your elbows as close to each other as you can. Inhale, bring your chin up, keep inhaling, take your head, once you, oh, take your head up, once your, the crown of your head is past midpoint, Start exhaling and glide your palms down the back of your legs. Bend your knees if you have to. I know I do. Whatever you do, may keep that connection. Do not let go of your hands. Inhale, come up. Because this is, this is Tiriyangasan, just release your arms, bring them down by your side. Because this is called, this is Tiriyangasan, it's a very intense back bend, just for this posture alone. It's not part of the sequence, but just for this posture alone, we're just gonna do a little bit of a twist just to ease our back, just a little bit. Go to the right and to the left, just twist a little bit. Kate, I'm sorry, you're feeling blindsided because you can't see what I'm doing. Watch the monitor. <laughs> but you're doing great, just to ease off a little bit. Now, we're gonna stay, we're gonna face the front of the room, front of the studio. We're gonna go into a posture called Thula Danda. Thula Danda is balancing scales. Danda is stick, Thula is the wing scales. So what, this does involve some balance. Make sure that you engage your low back muscles. Keep your focus directly ahead at a point that does not move. So you wanna look at something, if you're very confident, look at something really close to you. If you're not very confident today, look at something about five to six feet ahead. We're gonna try and look at the mic wherever you, your focus falls, that's fine. Transfer the weight to your right leg. Inhale, bring the arms overhead. Bring the arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead. We're gonna exhale and dip our torso and lift our left leg off of the floor. Exhale and dip. The whole body looks like a T. Look at a point that doesn't move. If you come out, as I did, go right back in. Inhale, come up. Bring your leg back down to the floor. This time we're gonna take the other leg back. Use your low back muscles. Exhale and dip. And did I mention, lift your right leg up. Keep your foot flexed, inhale, come up. Now, let's stay where we are as far as, no. Exhale, bring your arms back down. We're gonna go into Natrajasana, the dancer's pose. Well, there was something else, when I brought my arms down, I remember, there's something else you mentioned yesterday about the way we brought our arms down. Yes. Tell our viewers about that, it was beautiful. I did that because if there's a lot of people in the room or when there's a lot of, um, the, the space is limited, right. you want to um, keep prayer hands and come down the middle to respect your um, bystanders, people beside you. Right, so you don't go around hitting everybody, right? right? You won't violently <laughs> abuse anyone. And Kato, notice we have to keep our elbows close to us. So if you're in a room where there are lots of students, lots of participants in the yoga classroom, seeing that you're fairly new to yoga, you may want to keep that in mind. That's a very good point. Thank you for sharing that. We're going to go into the dancer's pose. Now, we did bring both the feet up in Tuladanda, right? Okay, transfer the weight to your right leg. Take your left hand, hold on to your left ankle from behind. So bend your left leg, hold on to your left ankle, 
Inhale, the right arm up. Hi, Gloria, bye, Gloria. Exhale, dip your torso, lift your knee. Look at a point that doesn't move. Hold. Use your low back muscles. Inhale, let's come up. Exhale and release. Release the leg first and then the arm, just so we don't fall out of that position. Transfer the weight to your left leg. Hold on, now place your left hand. This is another little trick that might help you. When you start this posture, place your left hand on, your left, on the left hip. Take your right hand, hold on to your right ankle from behind. Now once you're nice and steady, if you want to challenge yourself, keep your knees close to each other. Inhale, the left arm up. Look at a point that doesn't move. Exhale, dip the torso, lift the knee. Inhale, come up. Exhale, and release. I hope you remember to engage your low back muscles. All of these postures today are intended to strengthen your lower back. Now we're gonna go into a semi-seated posture. We're not yet into the seated postures, but we're gonna go down first. So let's just bring, let's do it gracefully. I like the way <laughs> you point out, so let's do it gracefully. Inhale, take your arms all the way overhead. Exhale, place your palms on the floor. Now, we're gonna take one leg back. So let's take the left leg back. You may have to wiggle your right foot forward a little more to bring it close to your uh, hands. And then place the left knee on the floor, uncurl your toes on the left foot, and let's come back just a little bit. We will need to vary this posture. This is Ashwa Sanchala. We're gonna vary this posture just a little bit, just so you can feel a nice bend in your low back. So use your low back, using your low back muscles, we're gonna inhale and bring Keep your feet, did I say keep your feet flat? Yes. Inhale, bring your arms out by the side. Bring your arms up to shoulder height. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead. And this time, all we're gonna do, clasp your palms together. All we're going to do is bring our biceps behind our ears and look up. It's a slight variation of Ashwa Sanchala equestrian posture. And dip, dip your hip. The deeper you go, the closer you go to the floor, the more you will need to engage your low back muscles. Inhale, let's come out of that. Place your palms on the floor beside your right foot. Curl the toes in your left foot. Take your knee, left knee off of the floor. Take the right foot back and bring the left foot forward. Place the knee, right knee on the floor. Uncurl your toes. And let's come back just a little bit. I need to come forward. There's a little less padding on the back of my mat. So dip your hip, let's go nice and close to the floor. Using your low back muscles, we're gonna just open up our chest, tighten your lower back. Inhale, bring the arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead. Hold, keep your arms where they are and just move your biceps behind your ears. The moment your shoulders go back, you will need to engage your low back muscles. So strengthen your lower back, tighten your low back muscles and hold. <coughs> Exhale and release. Let's come on our hands and knees in cat position. Marjorie Asan, bring your left foot back. We have both the knees directly below the hips. Toes are curled in. Both the hands are directly below the shoulders. Fingers are nicely splayed. Let's inhale, and as we inhale, we're gonna dip the torso down the center, bring our chest up, and our buttocks go up. So inhale, and dip. Strengthen your lower back, tighten your lower back muscles. You will feel it. As we exhale, we're gonna arch the back. Uncurl your toes when you arch your back. This will give you There'll be a little less pressure on your knees when you uncurl your toes. Curl your toes in again. Let's do that one more time. Curl your toes in, inhale, and dip. Exhale, uncurl your toes, arch your back. Okay, that's been a wonderful, uh, you know, movement, an undulating movement of the spine. So it actually 
not only strengthens your spine, it also releases any pain that you already may have. Another intense back bend is Ustra Asan. Ustra or camel is more or less a seated version of Tiryangasan. So let's come up on our knees. And maybe, okay, we'll just face the camera. Actually, no, why don't we, why don't you face a little more towards me and if you face, both cameras will pick you up. So you can see them in profile when they get their hands behind their back. I'm gonna stay right here. Uh, your, now compact yourself, so make sure that your equator, I like to call this the equator, <laughs> the center of your body is nice and tight. So your lower abdominal muscles are nice and tight, your buttocks are nice and tight. Bring your knees close together. Remember, if you're very tired today and not ready for the challenge, you can keep your knees apart. If you feel you're ready for it and you have very strong quads, you allow them to stretch, keep your knees together. Place your palms on your buttocks, take your elbows back, inhale, once you go past midpoint, as you lift your chin, you start exhaling, glide your palms down the back of your thighs. Right hand reaches for the right heel, left hand reaches for the left heel. Once you've made the connection, tilt your pelvis forward. Engage your low back muscles. If you get out of a posture, get right back in. Don't give up on yourself. Hold very gently. Place your right hand on your buttock. Left hand back on your buttock, inhale, let's come up. I'm gonna do one more back bend. Well, well, it's not a full back bend, it's still a seated back bend, let's sit down. We're gonna inhale and take, we're gonna sit on our heels, sit on our knees and heels. We're gonna go back all the way, Supta Vajra, that's posture number 23, in case you're looking for a clue, I probably should have called it out earlier. Sukta Vajra, place your right palm on the floor and then the left palm and very gradually lower your upper body to the floor. So place your right elbow on the floor and then the left elbow goes down. Once you're all the way down, tilt your head back. Try not to lift your knees off of the floor. You wanna keep your knees down. Now if you need to make any adjustments or if it's too intense, bring your knees out to the side. <laughs> Tighten your low back muscles. Press the floor with your palm and let's come up. Inhale, let's come up. And because we did two intense back bends, similar back bends, fairly intense, we just want to fold over just a little bit. Just to ease any tightening of the spine, any tightening that's more than necessary. Okay, let's inhale, come up. We are already in, um, we're already sitting on our heels, so all we have to do is take our left leg very gradually, very gently, glide your left leg behind you, kapot asan, kapot or pigeon, and then bring your right foot forward if you can. I know some schools make you come all the way out, so. Five minutes. Okay, thank you, Rich. If, if you feel very flexible today and you think, yes, you can. You don't want to compete with Talisa, but yes, you think you're ready to bring your right foot all the way forward, do that. But also know that it's a little more intense than usual. I'm not quite ready to bring my foot all the way out. So I'm gonna go the traditional way. I'm gonna keep my heel close to my groin. Whatever you do, and you're not doing too bad. Whatever you do, try to bring your hip as close to the floor as you can. And you know, if you're not able to bring your right foot forward, it may feel a little more difficult than usual, but you know what you can do? There's a little trick. Curl your toes in in the left foot and drag your left foot back all the way. Very nice. You should feel a beautiful, beautiful stretch on your abductor muscles on the outside of your right thigh, but more than that, this posture, this sequence is about back bends or strengthening the low back. So tighten, engage your low back muscles and look up. Bring your chest out. Shoulders go back, very nice, and hold. Inhale, very gently swing the left foot forward as gracefully as we can. <laughs> We're gonna swing the right foot back all the way. We want to stretch the other side. Even though, again, this is about strengthening the low back today. And this feet, oh wow, did you ever notice that this foot feels a little more, right? Mm -hmm. We're all different on both <laughs> sides, right? Yes. You're comfortable on both sides, wonderful. <laughs> This side feels a little more, seems to be cooperating a little more for me and I think for Kato as well today. It's actually it's my, my tougher side. The, oh, is that right? Um, okay. And it's, it's actually it's gotten a lot better for me. The, I usually overextend the right side a lot. Ah, okay. So this one is You're actually... You're doing pretty good. It's, it's actually staying down and not 
twitching or... Right, and it's not making you lift the other side up. No. But you're doing good. That's good. If this is your tougher side, wow, I should have watched you a little closer on the other side. <laughs> does this feel a little better for you, Kata? This is. It does, right? For me, too. But yeah, but you're doing beautifully in spite of this side being your tighter side. If you feel that one side feels a little tighter, that's okay. We all have imba imbalances in the body. You want to acknowledge that. Just make sure your hip is nice and centered. If you want to take this a little bit further, this has nothing to do with the back bend. This time what we're going to do, you're still strengthening your low back, but what we're going to do is just fold over just a little bit. Exhale and fold. <sighs> I think the last time we did this fold over, you almost went to sleep on me, right, Talisa? Yes, Somebody it, did. <laughs> it was, uh, I think Felt it was, so good, it, right? Yes. Yeah. Press with your palms. Inhale. Let's come up. And this time, I think this one is Talisa's favorite. Ba bring both your legs out in front of you. The boat posture. Oh, you would love this, Kato. The boat posture where you have to lift your legs and you have to use your lower abdominal muscles as well, even though we're strengthening the back. Okay, wow. Now I know I'm gonna to feel totally challenged in this one, I'm gonna give it a shot. And folks at home, if you're stretching with us, don't get discouraged if you're not able to lift your legs too high off of the floor, it's okay. The idea is to engage your low back muscles, and in this case, in this particular posture, you also strengthen, you tighten your lower abdominal muscles. Okay, let's bring our arms out in front of us, inhale, and lift your legs. Engage your lower abdominal and your low back. Inhale and lift. This also involves a bit of balance. So look at a point, maybe look at your toes and hold. Don't stop breathing here. Exhale and very gently release. Let's come back up. I need to get some feedback. Oh, we have a couple of minutes, so we're almost there. Okay, one more beautiful, beautiful strengthening of the back is Ashtanga Namaskara. Let's come in prone Five position. Seconds. Five seconds. 45. Okay. Oh, 45. <laughs> okay, prone position. This is a wonderful, it's a transition of two postures, Ashtanga Namaskara into Cobra. We're gonna curl our toes in and glide our knees closer to the chest. As we do that, the buttocks are gonna come off of the floor. Ashtanga, eight limbs, chin, chest, hands, feet and knees. Keep inhaling, lift your buttocks off of the floor and engage your low back muscles. Inhale, let's come up into Cobra. Keep your feet flat and remember this posture is a very intense posture as you bring your chest up. You want to test if you're using your low back muscles? Take your hands.